Oh, hey there, this is Dr. Evan Osar with Discover I Am I. Welcome to this edition of Integrative Movement Insider. Happy Tuesday. Hope you're having a great week. Hope your week has started out well. I was just working on my belly breathing, which actually is non-optimal breathing. If you notice, when I was breathing, just belly breathing, I'm not actually breathing in the right manner. Even though most of our industries, yoga, Pilates, strength conditioning, rehab, chiropractic, physical therapy, teach their clients to belly breathe. Belly breathing actually isn't a breathing strategy that we should be recommending to our clients unless that's specifically what they need. Because again, belly breathing is just another suboptimal breathing strategy, very similar to chest breathing. So in this edition of Integrative Movement Insider, and thank you so much for being here. Hello, my friend, Steven Schmolt. He's one of our Integrative Movement Specialists and came through Team 1 of Integrative Movement Specialists when we were first teaching breathing way back, I don't know, 12 years ago now. Our breath, breath training has changed quite a bit. However, the same concept applies today as it did 10 years ago. Hello, Rahul from India, another one of our Integrative Movement Specialists. Thanks for joining me today. One of the things we teach in the Integrative Movement Specialist Certification, as well as most of the programs that we deliver here on our education channel, so subscribe if you're not part of our community, we'd love to have you, is the importance of using the entire thoracopelvic cylinder in the breathing process. And what we mean by the thoracopelvic cylinder is the cylinder because it functionally is a cylinder, right? From the first rib. So actually put your fingers on your collarbone, your clavicles, go straight back. That's your first rib. Your lungs are basically in this soft tissue or right below this soft tissue. So your, the apex of your lungs, the top of your lungs goes all the way up to this area right below your first rib. Now, if you put your hands on your sit bones, your pelvic floor is the bottom of the cylinder. Your pelvic floor works with the respiratory diaphragm. Your pelvic floor muscles function as a functional diaphragm as well, so that when you breathe in, the diaphragm pushes the organs down. The pelvic floor also gets pushed down by the movement of the organs. And then as we breathe out, the pelvic floor goes through a concentric contraction. The diaphragm relaxes and goes through an eccentric contraction, and they both move together. Well, that's how we can use, or I should say, how we should use the entire cylinder to breathe from the first rib all the way down to our sit bones so we activate the pelvic floor as well. Now, we also want to make sure that we're breathing side to side through the ribs because the ribs function sort of like bucket handles and they move in this manner. So they increase as you breathe in, they move this direction to increase the diameter of the diaphragm. The sternum should also move out, or should say move anteriorly, the back of the ribcage should move posteriorly. So that way we're increasing the front, the anterior to posterior, the front to back dimension of the ribcage as well. So therefore, the entire cylinder from the first rib all the way down to the bottom of the pelvis should be involved in the breathing process. Now, if we look at a lot of our older clients, I'm going to assume the posture of a lot of our older clients. They're in increased thoracic kyphosis. They're pelvis is in posterior pelvic tilt and translated forward so their thorax is behind their pelvis and if you watch them breathe you can see this on the video looks awesome right <laughs> mostly on belly breathing and most of your older clients become predominant belly breathers even those of us in, in the health and fitness industry when we learn breathing we learn to breathe through the mostly through the belly that's not an optimal breathing strategy, as I mentioned. We want to help our clients get better breathing through their entire cylinder. For most of our clients, for most of us as health and fitness professionals, the area we struggle the most is getting the breath around the rib cage. So I want to show you a very quick and easy way to, number one, assess your clients to show them that breathing can make a difference. Because, again, you and I know the, the importance of breathing. We know how it regulates flow of air in and then flow of air out. We understand the importance for pressure regulation. We, we, re, we notice or know the importance of breathing for mobilization of the organs, the internal organs, as well as mobilizing the rib cage, the spine, and the pelvis itself. 
We understand all those benefits. It's hard for our clients to understand why breathing is so important. So one of the ways you can help educate your clients is to show them that it's not just about relaxation because everybody knows, hey, if I breathe, I generally relax. If I breathe in a more efficient manner, I will re relax. However, if you can show them changes, immediate changes from breathing, you will get more buy-in. So let me show you just a couple of quick, easy assessments. Let's, let's, use, let's use the hips as an example. So put your hands on your pelvis, put your feet underneath your hips. So your, your feet are about hip width apart, put your hands on your pelvis. Do this with me if you're watching, if you're not familiar with, with this. So rotate your hips to the right, rotate your hips to the left. And most of us will have one side, do it one more time, rotate right, come back to center, rotate left. Most of us will have one side that's more limited than the other. My, my left side, I have more limited hip internal rotation on that side. My foot isn't quite as flat on the ground on my left side. I'm a, I'm a bit more supinated on that side and I have better contact on my right side. Let's do one more quick, easy assessment. Stand on single leg. So right side, stable, foot tripod, big toe, small toe, heel, nice and controlled on the floor. Left side, again, if you notice, even in the camera, just watch my, watch my alignment of my head, my thoracopelvic cylinder, as I go right, very minimal weight shift. So very minimal weight shift and very well aligned to get my weight over my right foot. Now put your feet back down and just watch me. Notice how much I have to shift to get my weight centered and controlled. Yeah, I have great balance on this side, relatively good balance, <laughs> decent balance on this left side, but you see the difference in strategy here, aligned. And if you saw me, saw my feet, I'm pretty much right over my foot. My foot is pretty well controlled, very little ankle sway. Left side is a completely different story. I have to shift way over, and now my ankle is a little bit more unstable, or there's a lot, little bit lack of control on this left side, even though my balance overall is good. So again, difference side to side. Now think about this, I'm a right-handed, Dom, right hand dominant person. If I'm playing basketball, if I'm playing sports, and I need this left leg to be more, my more stable leg, which it should be as a right handed, right hand dominant individual, I'm not as controlled on that side. That side is, is my less stable side. That's the ankle I tend to twist a little bit more. Not necessarily sprain, but I just don't feel stable and it goes out on me quite a bit compared to my right side. My right side doesn't really go out. So we can see how these subtle changes, because people will say, oh, this is just subtle, Dr. Osa, that doesn't really matter. Yeah, it does when we start to think about performance. And what we want to think about with our clients is not just improving their breathing for the sake of improving improving breathing, obviously that will be helpful, but also how it relates to performance. All right, so we have some assessments. We've got, you know, single leg stance, we've got hip rotation, a little bit more limited. Now, one of the best ways to increase hip mobility is actually to think about breathing down towards the pelvis and the pelvic floor. Remember I said earlier that when we breathe in, our diaphragm should push the organs down and the Pelvic floor should go through its eccentric contraction. Well, your hip rotators, many of your hip rotators, fascially blend into your pelvic floor. So if you're not breathing well down this direction, and when, you, when your clients are breathing out this way, they're generally not getting their breath well down that direction. And oftentimes it's because they're over gripping from their hips. They've got their pelvis and their hip complex locked in tight. Most of us have been taught to do that same strategy. So here's a quick, easy way to improve hip mobility. So grab yourself a strap. You don't need a, an elastic strap. You could even use a stretching strap. Wrap it around your pelvis. So right in front of your, so here's my ASI, those, those bones in front of your pelvis. Cross over the band. You can do this lying down. You can do this seated. You can do it with your back up against the wall. I'll do it right here. Just cross the band over. And what I want you to focus on is your breath going down not out into the belly, but down towards the pelvic floor. Because remember, or recognize that the diaphragm basically acts like a piston inside the cylinder. That's why this alignment here, rib cage over top the pelvis, is so important. Because we want the diaphragm to work like a piston inside the cylinder. We want the pelvic floor to basically have almost be like a reverse piston to lift those organs and lift the tissue back up out, out of the pelvic bowl. Okay, so we're going to breathe in and out through our nose. So that's another important strategy for improving your client's breathing is get them breathing more through the nose versus the mouth. Get them out of mouth breathing unless 
they're forced to, that, that's the only way they can breathe because of nasal obstructions or some other respiratory issue, okay? So wrap the band around the ASI, is the lower, the front of the pelvis, and now breathe in through the nose and focus on the breath going down towards your hips. And also think about your breath going down and then wider into the pelvis, into the pelvic brim or into that pelvic bowl, okay? So here we go, we'll, we'll do five breaths. Breathing in through the nose, breathing out through the nose as well. And stay long. Don't change alignment just because you're breathing, okay? Here we go. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathing in, breathing out. Relax the pelvic floor, relax the sit bones. Basically, you're, you're relaxing over gripping of the hip muscles. Let's go one more breath. Okay, so now I want you to put your hands on your pelvis. So put your fingers right in the front side of your pelvis. So your fingers are right in the front side of your ASIS. Let's feel that breath, the same breath you just did. Let's feel that breath going down low, not out, down low. Do two more breaths. And one more breath. Now, let's incorporate our breathing into an exercise. Let's just choose a body weight squat just because it's simple, easy. We can easily do it here because we want to incorporate breathing and movement. It's not just breathing in a static position, even though that's the way we train most clients. We want to incorporate breath work into a movement pattern like a squat. So here we go. We're going to breathe in. And as we breathe out, squat down, focus on spreading the sit bones. So breathe in. Come back up without over squeezing the hips. Breathe out to sit down into the squat. Breathe in and breathe out. Go two more. Breathe in and breathe out. Focus on widening, widening the sit bones. So going wide through the sit bones. Breathe in to come back up. And then one more time, breathe out to squat and then come back up. Now, let's just check our range of motion. Let's check our single leg stance. So put your hands back on your pelvis, put your feet underneath your pelvis as they were when you first assessed. So let's check standing hip rotation. So I'm gonna rotate right. That still feels good, it felt good before. Now left rotation, much better. So now my left rotation feels a bit more like my right rotation, just smoother, less restricted. Now let's check single leg stance. That, that's really an important assessment because again, walking is all about the control of going from double leg support to single leg support and that control on single leg. So right side still feels good, feels real stable. Now left side, remember my big weight shift, so much better, less weight shift and better just, just feeling and connection through my left foot. Not the same as the right side, but much better than my pre-assessments. So at least I know it made a difference and that's a great way to help your clients start to see the difference just a small amount of breathing can have. Now, we talked about breath for improving performance. Now we wanna incorporate breathing into a higher level pattern. So what we wanna think about, one of the things you'll, you know, a lot of people ask me like, what is all that crazy stuff you do when you're on, on your videos? You always do this stuff with your head and your rib cage. I'm setting myself up for success, both in alignment postural control, as well as movement. Because when I do something like a deadlift, I'll do a deadlift right here, I've got a couple dumbbells down here. I wanna make sure that my cylinder is aligned so that I'm stacked over top of my feet because that's the best position to load your spine. So I start with alignment as if I'm being pulled up from the backside of my head and neck, stack the rib cage over top of the pelvis. Now I'm gonna keep that alignment and then hinge my weights are this direction. <laughs> Keep that alignment, long spine, rib cage aligned as if I'm being pulled up from the backside of my head and neck. Then I hinge to grab my dumbbells. So now I've got my dumbbells. Maintaining that same alignment, I'm going to use my breath now to breathe out. Same alignment in my hip hinge. Breathe in to come back up. Breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. And with a lighter load here, I've got 30 pound dumbbells, relatively light for me to do, 
I can use my eccentric, my, my breath to improve my eccentric control, my hip hinge, and then use my breath to come back up while maintaining my cylinder alignment. I'll do two more. Breathe in, and then breathe out. Now, obviously, you could switch your, your breath up and do the same sort of breath, you know, more focus on breathing in on the way down and breathing out on the way up. I just reversed it to help create a bit more eccentric lengthening and maintaining my alignment. So let's just go back. Let's recheck. Again, it was five repetitions. Let's just go see what happened to my range of motion. So my right hip rotation actually feels better. My left hip rotation actually feels better as well. All right, let's just say at least as good. Let's look at single leg stance. So single leg stance, stable. Feels really solid. My foot feels very solid. I feel very uprighted over top of my foot. And then left side, same thing. Still not as great as the right side, but much better control. Less ankle frontal plane motion, much better control on that foot tripod. So just an easy way to, number one, assess breath. Number two, use breath training to improve alignment and control. Show your clients that breath training makes a difference, not just in how they feel, but how they perform. Because your clients, yeah, they want to feel better, but they, want, they really want to see functional results. They want to see changes in strength or balance or agility. Breath training is a key, the missing key oftentimes, to improving performance, to, to improving mobility, to maintaining mobility and improving overall function and performance. So this, this is Dr. Evan Osar with Discover IMAN. I am I. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it made sense. I hope it sort of reinforced some of the things that you already know, some of the things you're already doing, and maybe just maybe helped you think a little bit differently about it. And then also how to educate and explain the importance of breath training to your clients. Because without optimal breathing, your client will do a lot of compensations or create a lot of compensations in their body to get optimal breath, especially as they start exercising. So use a breath, improve posture, performance, decrease chronic mobility issues, so tightness, as well as even some of your clients that have chronic pain, this will help them as well, even though we're not addressing pain as fitness professionals. If you're looking for more resources, I put the link next to this video or wherever you're watching it. The Anatomy of Breathing, Jill, my fellow anatomy geek and I, we created a three module series just on breath training. Understanding the anatomy, understanding the physiology behind breath, and more importantly, how to assess and train your clients from the most basic level of breath training on in the supine position, in the prone position, in the seated position, and then how to use this breath, use your breath similar to what I did today, and take your clients through the functional exercise patterns, the myofascial release, because myofascial release is a very big part of teaching your clients or helping your clients develop more optimal breath and then how to progress them through functional exercises so they can actually perform better because again like i said that's why your client is coming to you they want to perform there's things they want to do they want to walk with their and pick up their grandchildren they want to hike or bike or even maybe even run or play pickleball that's pretty popular in some parts of the country probably most of the country right now and there's things they, they need to and want to do. So breath training is often the missing key to improving performance. It's what we do with all our clients. Is there's never a client that comes into our, I should say not never, never use the word never. Rarely a client that comes in that we don't do breath training unless they're already doing optimal breath training. And most clients are not doing optimal breath training. So <laughs> it's really with every client, we're doing some kind of breath training or breath re-education or just honing in on their breath. So if you want to, learn more and more importantly be able to apply this directly and right away to your clients and see a huge difference in their posture their movement and most importantly their performance check out the anatomy of breathing we'd love to see you it's an awesome community of individuals it's an awesome resource to help you understand the respiratory system the respiratory muscles and then how they relate to common issues like chronic neck tightness, shoulder tightness, back tightness, and then how to use assessment and corrective exercises to improve breathing and incorporate this information into the functional movement patterns so you can become that resource for your clients or your community that needs someone just like you to help them get through life and perform at their greatest level. So look forward to seeing you in Two Anatomy Geeks, The Anatomy of Breathing. Have a great day. If there's anything we can do to help support you, let us know.
Appreciate you guys being part of our community. Appreciate you joining me this afternoon. Make it a great day. Go out there. Be the leader our community needs. That your industry and your local community needs. Be that light. Bring people together. Be a resource that educates, inspires, and empowers people to be and perform at their best. Take care.